Hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber, a warm welcome back. The Oxford English Dictionary defines luxury as a state of great comfort or elegance, especially when involving great expense. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the best luxury brands in the world. They're the brands that the top 1% of the wealthiest people in the world typically buy. They're brands that are the best in their respective sectors and they're heavily weighted on quality and craftsmanship. I'm Anya Sousa Gonda and I manage a luxury lifestyle management business in London. My content is largely educationally focused and geared towards people who are typically new to money or keen to explore alternate mid -lux or super brands that are a little under the radar but still heavily weighted on quality. I'm going to be focused on a handful of brands. They are within the fashion fine jewelry space and very much geared towards women. But some of the brands do cater for men, but I will at a later time focus on brands that are more male centric. As I mentioned earlier, um, the brands that the top 1% buy are going to be expensive. Luxury is typically expensive. And as you go up the levels of luxury in terms of the quality, in terms of the craftsmanship, they become literally eye-wateringly expensive. But with the super wealthy, it's never about the cost. It's always about the value that that item presents. And that value presents itself in a number of ways. For example, the items are discreet. There's very little in terms of logos. They're not flashy. It's either you as the wearer who knows what the brand is or somebody who's familiar with the brand will know. Otherwise, you have no way of knowing what the brand is. It's brands that operate very much under the radar and they don't advertise or market their businesses. And if they do with a couple of the brands, it's very much um, kept to a minimum and it's just to get their brand out there. But the people who they're targeting are not people who necessarily want or need the publicity. They know this brand is good quality and they will go for it. The products are made from the finest fabrics using exceptional craftsmanship. They're typically handmade or hand finished, depending on what they are. And what you find is because these brands are very much under the radar, um, counterfeits are virtually zero, if at all, at an absolute minimum. Your brands like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, where somebody's a little newer to money, still learning how to navigate that terrain. There are so many amazing quality brands and it's, it's very difficult for people to be fooled um, in terms of buying something that's as good as the original but with your brands under the radar that is never really the issue and what you also find is that from start to finish um, your interactions with the brand whether you're buying something they have a full range of services um, the staff are exemplary in terms of just their product knowledge their professionalism and just their overall conduct I'm going to kick off with two brands that I've mentioned in two previous videos, Christmas gift idea videos, firstly the women's video and also the children's video last week. Uh, two Italian brands, Brunello Cuccinelli and Loro Piana, and they are the benchmarks when it comes to cashmere. Brunello Cuccinelli is an eponymously made in Italy brand. Brunello Cuccinelli is the creative director and CEO of the business and he is rightly and deservingly known in the industry as the king of cashmere. He literally started the coloured cashmere sweater um, industry um, a little over 40 years ago. He wanted to become um, an expert, a real expert in a particular niche. And at that time he was involved with cashmere and it was women's cashmere sweaters that he was making. And he noticed that there weren't any colored sweaters and um, he found himself a dye expert and they produced three round neck and three V neck uh, sweaters in the color orange. And within three months he had sold 400 sweaters. And then early 90s, he introduced men's cashmere sweaters. And then about 20 years ago, he introduced the entire Brunello Cuccinelli look from head to toe, a style that's very easy, it's very wearable, it's a casual style from day to evening, very much focused around the neutral color palette and he has your cashmere um, sweaters and cardigans, as well as other pieces, trousers, skirts, tops, and so forth, either with cashmere, pure cashmere, or cashmere blended with silk, with vicuna, or other high quality um, yarns. Looking specifically at the cashmere sweaters, the cheapest that he produces, the basic line V-neck, round neck, uh, retail for £750 and go right up to about £6,000 depending on what the mix in the cardigan is. Very simple, 
understated item that has no labeling, just a little um, brass hook at the back. Otherwise, there's no way of telling it's Brunello Cuccinelli. The quality is phenomenal. And as I mentioned, it doesn't bobble. It doesn't stretch. It doesn't lose its shape, lose its color. It just looks perfect. And if you're somebody who typically buys uh, new cashmere pieces every season or every two years, you spend anything from two to possibly 500 pounds, something for you to really consider is buying basic Brunello Cuccinelli cashmere sweaters um, on sale, uh, depending on where you go, anywhere from about four to five, 600 pounds, and you get a perfect product. Whatever color you go for, you will have that sweater for life. Um, you will never have any issues with it, provided you look after it. It'll be just as good as it looked from the first day you bought it until you're ready to retire it or give it away. The other thing I wanted to mention is I, I started off by saying with the top 1%, it's never about the cost of the item. It's very much about the value that the product presents. And when you look at, for example, Brunello Cuccinelli, you have some of the most high profile wearers, for example, Mark Zuckerberg, who's very well known for his great T-shirt and jean um, combination for everyday work. He doesn't want to invest any time or effort into deciding what to wear. He wants to put all of his efforts into making bigger decisions. And he, his gray t-shirts are custom made Brunello Cuccinelli and they sell for just under $300. And another high profile wearer is Jeff Bezos. And in the last year or so, he's been getting a lot of flack, literally pilloried online um, as he has changed his dress, dress sense and literally elevated his look. He's looking a lot more dapper. And he's somebody who has started wearing a lot more Brunello Cuccinelli blazers. And they retail from about two and a half through to about six, seven thousand, again, depending on the material. But he looks fantastic. And you can even tell the difference, how, uh, how, how more confident he comes across. He has a swag because when you look good, it totally affects just how you come across and how you present yourself. And then my next brand is Laura Piana. Laura Piana and Brunello Cuccinelli are exactly the same in terms of quality. The only difference is just the style. Uh, Brunello, as I mentioned, is a lot more casual. It's easy to wear. Whereas Laura Piana is very classic in the look, very neat, very smooth, very neat silhouettes. And the look is classic, a little formal. Um, slightly different color palette, a bigger range of colors. Uh, interestingly, uh, Brunello Cuccinelli is very much focused on the neutral palettes is what neutral colors is what he wears a lot of and he doesn't like green and you'll never see green on him but you see a much wider color palette uh, from Laura Piana they don't have their own uh, farm where they rear their own goats and source the cashmere but they source the highest quality uh, cashmere from uh, Mongolia and what you find with Laura Piana is that they produce materials that are useful for, for men's suits for example or Latan that I mentioned in my um, Christmas ideas for women and brands will buy yarn from Laura Piana because of the assured quality but in terms of which is better it's very much down to the style what you go for but both are very good in terms of quality they're that absolute best in the industry the products don't bobble they don't lose their shape they don't use, lose their color and they look good from the start to the very end my next three brands are handbag brands and i will talk about all three in tandem the first is a french brand called moina the second is an italian brand called valextra and the third is um, delvo a belgian brand the most coveted handbag in the world is from Hermes, the Birkin. And Hermes, as we know, is one of the biggest and best luxury groups in the world. Anything they produce from homeware to fashion is going to be the very best. Um, a couple of weeks I mentioned them when I was talking about scarves. They produce the very best scarves in the world. A lot of brands emulate or take uh, the queue from Hermes and they produce their uh, silk scarves using Lyon silk and Lyon silk is the very best in terms of silk and they use a printing technique that ensures that the color and the, uh, the actual design uh, remains vibrant through the whole life of the, the scarf and the scarves typically are heirlooms which you can pass on to your children and children's children once you have them you have them for life but going back to the handbags, there's the Hermes Birkin, the most coveted handbag. And then they also have two other highly sought after handbags, the Kelly and also the Constance. The three brands that I've uh, mentioned are very much 
um, in the industry um, offering a different alternative to the big five, which include Hermes. So Hermes, Dior, you have Louis Vuitton, you have um, Gucci, and you also have Chanel. The three brands I've mentioned sit very comfortably between Hermes and the other four. If anything, they are more on par with Hermes for quality and also for um, for craftsmanship. The first brand, Moina, the French brand, uh, was privately invested into by Bernard Arnault. And Bernard Arnault is the chairman and CEO of Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, the biggest luxury group in the world. And he privately invested into Moina because he wanted to build it into a brand that would confidently rival Hermes for quality and for craftsmanship. And he's done a phenomenal job. Their range of bags, the different styles that they have, matches Hermes for quality, for style, for craftsmanship on par. The other two brands, slightly different in terms of the style, but the quality is on par. Velextra, the Italian brand, they don't have a, a creative designer in-house. What they do is they work with independent art artisans from around the world who hand make the bags and then they insert a number in the bag, which then details who the artisan is and the date the bag was produced. Delvaux is a Belgian brand and they are the oldest fine leather group in the world and they produce a number of bags which are very popular within the the wealthy community people who don't necessarily want a handbag that everybody has these three bags are, are for people who want bags that are very much under the radar uh, they want quality they want craftsmanship they potentially have a big range of bags anyway and they're just adding to it there's somebody who potentially is not governed by the need for a known brand but they want the craftsmanship and they want the quality of the bag um, all three brands I'm going to talk about them in a lot more detail in the new year I'll do individual videos on them but they are three phenomenal brands for somebody who wants nothing but exceptional quality um, exceptional craftsmanship these three you need to get on your radar and more so now it's so topical with uh, brands such as Chanel and Louis Vuitton putting up their prices but the quality particularly with Chanel the quality doesn't necessarily match the new price tag but these are three brands uh, bags I'd like you to get on your radar and I'll talk about in a lot more detail in the new year. My next two brands are women's wear brands. Uh, the first eponymously named it's uh, Alaya and the designer who died a couple of years ago as a Dean Alaya was known as the king of cling. He was very much focused on your uh, figure hugging body hugging dresses that very much celebrated the female form. Um, his clothes are very distinct in terms of a characteristic perforated look and you see that in the clothes, in the shoes and the handbags that he produces. In the 80s and 90s you had some of the biggest supermodels Kate Moss and Naomi Campbell wearing a lot of uh, a lot of Alaya pieces and even to this day Naomi is one of the biggest champions of Alaya. She has the most sensational body so you can imagine how beautiful and statuesque she looks in the um, form-fitting uh, dresses. But the quality is amazing and their dresses are more occasion pieces which you wear uh, and want to look show-stopping either for a wedding, a birthday, a major event, red carpet, whatever it may be. The pieces stand out, they're striking and you can tell an Elia dress from a mile away. Uh, a couple of years ago, two, possibly three years ago, Kim Kardashian was seen wearing um, the bomb heels and ever since that moment it went from a brand that was very much under the radar nobody ever really talked about it uh, or knew it and suddenly it was catapulted into the limelight by uh, Kim Kardashian but because of the price point it's still relatively unattain uh, unattainable to the average person but everything they produce is amazing and in particular their shoes I have a video where I was talking about um, some of the best designer brands uh, for quality and for comfort which I'll attach above and I'm going to do a follow-up. I want to mention in that video, um, Alaya. In terms of craftsmanship, I've always said Manola Blahnik produces some of the most beautiful shoes in terms of the craftsmanship, all handmade, um, and they're made uh, beautifully. But Alaya shoes, for me, are the best in terms of the craftsmanship. But where Manola is ahead is that the craftsmanship and the comfort go hand in hand. Alaya shoes are very well made, but because they're typically vertiginous, unless you're somebody who's comfortable wearing heels, they're not going to be the most comfortable. But in terms of how they're made, the craftsmanship, 
they are the very best in the shoe market. My second um, brand that I'd like to talk about is more your everyday brand. It's a, a brand made by a German designer called Jill Sander. And um, Jill Sander clothes are very much your luxurious, understated, everyday pieces. She's very much into the minimal, minimalist look and she's into the quality of the materials and the construction of the pieces. Uh, they're beautiful. Um, very well made everyday pieces that stand out and uh, make a statement without being showy by just their mere simplicity. So two brands, there's a liar for your occasion wear and then for your everyday uh, show-stopping pieces that are just simple but beautifully made, you have Jill Sander. My next brand is one that's legendary for its undergarments, its bodysuits and its hosiery. But in the last few years, um, undergarments, there are a number of other brands that I think are just as competitive and offer products that compete neck and neck with Wilford. But when it comes to hosiery and bodysuits, Wilford are head and shoulders ahead of their competitors. Uh, relative to all the other products I've spoken about um, in this particular video, they are the cheapest, by far the cheapest. And you don't necessarily um, struggle to buy uh, any products from Wolford, you may need to save, but what you will notice is that relative to the other products in their particular segments, they are two, three, possibly four times the price of their competitors. With Wilford, for example, there are a couple of videos I've made. The first was where I was talking about the Wilford Fatal dress, which was made famous by Kim Kardashian. Again, Wilford is a brand that's very much under the radar. And up until the point when she wore the Wilford Fatal dress, very, very few people knew about Wilford as a brand. But ever since that moment, a lot more people are taking note of Wilford and therefore you get the competitors coming in trying to offer a better quality product at a fraction of the price. But when it comes to, for example, the bodysuits, you are paying, as I mentioned earlier, two, three, four times the price of the other competitors. But what you're paying for with Wilford is undisputably the quality and the craftsmanship. The material is amazing. It doesn't ever bobble. It doesn't burst at the seams. It doesn't lose its shape. Um, it doesn't tear. It looks as good as it was when you first bought it uh, years, months later, whatever it may be. It's usually a case of you outgrow the bodysuit and pass it on to someone else or just throw it out because you want something else. You feel you've got your fair wear and tear, which is a bit extravagant, but I know people who donate things once they're done and they feel, I want to upgrade to something else from Wolford. Um, they have a different style of material, but in terms of body suits, there is absolutely no other brand in the market that produces the same level of quality um, and classic pieces as Wolford does. And then looking at hosiery, again, hosiery is exactly the same. You have a number of high-end designer brands that produce hosiery, but Wolford comes out on top because of the quality and the consistency of the product. Um, you have issues such as there's there's no bobbling whatsoever with their tights, uh, but, uh, particularly the ones that have the lycra in them or elastin. The cotton ones will bobble, but what you're paying for is the quality. They last a long time. They look good the entire life. Um, that you have with the tights. And if you buy a couple of pairs for the winter, they will comfortably see you through in terms of just the warmth, looking good and um, feeling very good and soft against your skin. So that's Wolford for your body suits and also for your hosiery. My final brand is Patek Philippe. And Patek Philippe is a brand that works for both men and women. It's not the most expensive watch brand in the world, but it is arguably the most revered, the most respected, the most sought after. And depending on um, which style you go, uh, particularly the, the rarer or the vintage styles, and if you know what you're looking for, they are absolutely phenomenal as investments and you will more than get your money back if not double at least 50% of whatever you initially invested. And as they say, Patek's you don't necessarily buy to own for life. You buy them as an investment for the future generation. And you find a lot of people buy them as heirlooms, pass them on to their children, or they buy them as a much bigger collection. And one thing I've noticed from data is that when you have somebody who's an ardent watch collector, you find they typically have 
two of these three brands. You have Patek, you have Rolex, you have Audemars Piguet. And there's another one that's started coming up onto the radar, Omega, particularly for investment purposes as an asset with very good returns. But Patek is a brand you cannot go wrong with, whether it's something that you wear and then you have the association of the prestige and the heritage of the brand or something you buy literally just to park your money as an investment. You can't go wrong with Patek, Philippe. I've given you a fairly diverse selection of some of the brands that the top 1% of the wealthiest people in the world typically buy. They are brands that would take forever to say for, with the exception of Wolford, but consider as part of my buy better, buy less, buying some of the entry level ranges, which are cheaper, buying items on sale, buying items from outlet stores or online when something is out of season or maybe from a couple of years back. It's a way of dabbling into the brand instead of buying a lot of cheap things which you are always replacing whether it's monthly every year or whatever it may be in the long run it is a lot cheaper to buy quality from from the onset because you save that one time and once you've bought it you have it for life and you enjoy the phenomenal quality and the craftsmanship associated with that product if you have any further questions do let me know as always in the comments down below but otherwise do like share, subscribe and comment down below and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.